Hey everyone, my name's Dom and welcome to my channel, Dominish Cooks. Today I'm going to be making a... Sorry, what's that? Books. Dominish Books. Oh. So what I'm going to do today is have a quick look through the physical books that I've got in my collection. I feel like this is a really good introduction because it allows you to see the type of books that I'm into. Spoiler alert, it's almost all fantasy. So you can see whether you're going to enjoy the type of content that I've got um, available for you. The books that I've got are in my study, which doesn't have the best of lighting and it's also not got the best of space. So uh, that's the reason why you can't see my lovely bookshelves behind me whilst I'm filming these videos. Maybe that'll change in the future, but for now you can have a nice white wall behind me instead. As we have a look through the books that I own, I'm not going to pull each one off the shelves, but I will highlight some individual books that I think are worthy of a little bit of further discussion. I'll also point out the ones that I've not read. So if you've got any of the books that you see today that you'd like to hear a little bit more about, you'll know whether I've read it and can give you some more solid answers. Drop me a note in the comments below or catch me on Discord if you like, and I'll be able to talk a little bit more about those books. And hopefully you can pick up a couple of good recommendations from today's video. So with all that said, let's go have a look. So what I'll do first is give you a nice little view of my dragon and wizard collection on the top of my shelves. There's one. And there's the other. Bookshelf to my right is actually my wife's, so that's primarily full of Stephen King, her favourite author. And then moving on to mine, what I'll do is uh, to avoid the shaky camera, I'll just take stills of these. So first of all we've got the Wheel of Time, so uh, 11 paperbacks plus New Spring. I won these in a Waterstones competition so it's really nice to get brand new copies of each of those. That's very nice of them and I was able to donate my existing copies. I've then got Peter V. Brett's Demon Cycle. I've got book five to read on my Kindle but I haven't read it yet. This used to be one of my favourite series when it started off. I really enjoyed The Painted Man which you can find in the US as the warded man but I found that the books um, kind of lost their way a little bit we went a little bit downhill at the end then I've got a really nice special edition of the great bazaar and other stories which is signed uh, by the author as well um, I won that in a, a competition many years ago from him up on the top we've got the blade itself and before they're hanged just waiting to get my copy of last argument of kings to complete my physical collection there and then we've got Jen Williams, A Copper Promise. This was a debut book that I quite enjoyed. It's a bit like a dungeon crawler um, scenario. It was originally released as four uh, web books, so it's a little bit choppy where they've been put together into one novel, but uh, it's still worth a read if you enjoy a nice fantasy adventure. So on the next shelf down, we've got uh, a bit of a selection. My books aren't, I should say, all grouped together by author. Um, it's mostly done by size, although you can see I've not done a very good job of that here. Um, so what you'll find is typically my big hardback books are down on the bottom shelf along with some of the bigger paperbacks. Um, moving on as I get further up, I've got the smaller books, uh, generally the paperback. So that's what I've got here. The first batch of my R.A. Salvatore collection. One of my favourite characters, Drizzt, uh, the Dark Elf, I think is brilliant. Um, and I've got quite a few of the uh, the stories involving him. Then got Michael J. Sullivan, one of my favourite series, Rioria Revelations. Gardens of the Moon, book one of Malazan. This is it's a bit polarising. Um, I know a lot of people who really like Malazan didn't like Gardens of the Moon but loved the rest of them. I actually quite enjoyed Gardens of the Moon. Um, I'm yet to finish Malazan. I got through uh, the first, well, I DNF'd book three, but I do want to go back to it and try it again at some point because I, I do want to find out more about that series and see what uh, everyone's raving about, really. So Shadows of the Apt is actually one of my favourite series. Um, it's not a typical Dom series because I don't like guns or kind of modern technology in my fantasy settings. Um, I don't do urban fantasy at all. I don't do flintlock fantasy at all. 
Shadows of the Apt, however, I got drawn in before I realised that it did have kind of steampunk elements and there were kind of, not quite guns, but uh, what they call snap bows, which are, it's a kind of gun, really, that is invented by one of the characters in this world. So this is a really interesting series for me. Adrian Tchaikovsky's kind of become synonymous with uh, creepy crawly type characters. In here we have uh, all the characters are insect kingdom, so although they're not all insects, you've got things like spiders as well. They all have um, kind of totem animals and they've got traits of those totem animals. So you've got things like flies who have got wings and can fly, but they're also uh, a little bit smaller than most of the, uh, the other characters. And they've got kind of this sixth sense, um, like when you're trying to swat a fly and it can kind of sense you and fly out of the way. And the characters have those kind of senses. You've got wasps who also have wings and can fly and they've got a stinger that they shoot out of the palm of their hand. So there's some really interesting characters and, and ideas with this. And it, if you get the opportunity, it's a series that I definitely recommend. Then at the end, you've got Spiderlight, which is another Tchaikovsky creepy crawly type. Um, this one's uh, a standalone. It's it's barely more than a novella. It's, it's only about uh, 300 pages, but again, it's quite a good read and I quite enjoyed that one. So the next shelf down, I've got my Brendan Sanderson collection, which isn't a very big one. I need to get into the Wave... Uh, not the Wave Kings. I need to get into the Stormlight Archive. I've read the Wave Kings. You can see here I've got, uh, because they're UK editions, the Wave Kings is split into two, which is really frustrating because... That's two books bought instead of just one for the one story. Mistborn is one of my favourite series. Really enjoyed that. Love the magic system in it. Uh, Elantris and Warbreaker as well. Really enjoyed. And uh, yeah, The Way of Kings I can see becoming a favourite. Uh, I just need to continue with it. Above those, I've got a nice little uh, Icewind Dale trilogy. So this is continuing the Drizzt uh, and Company, the, the Companions of the Hall there, um, by R.A. Salvatore. A few Marcus Heights books, uh, some really nice looking dwarves books. Haven't read the fifth book yet, uh, but I quite enjoyed the first four. The first book, definitely, The Dwarves, was a really good adventure. The other ones weren't quite as good. They didn't quite live up to that, but uh, definitely worth a read. And then the ones above that, Righteous Fury and so. It's kind of the same story told from the opposite side. So, so these are dark elves who are fighting against the dwarves in many of the scenarios in the the five books below. Um, the story does diverge, so it's not just a retelling from the opposite side, but you can see kind of crossovers. If you've read both series, you can see events that you already know about, but you're seeing them from the opposition kind of point of view. Then a short story collection edited by George R. R. Martin, Rogues. Uh, this one, I don't really do short stories, so I've, I've read a couple of these. I generally tend to pick these up, if anything, just to continue reading stories by authors who I've I've read a lot of their books, just to continue in the world. Or if there's a new author that I'm not sure about, I'll maybe pick up a short story and just see what the writing style is like, see if I'll get along with them. And then another series that I really enjoyed, The Deed of Paxenarian, where I've got the bind-up um, of the, the original trilogy. That one I really enjoyed. Haven't read the other two there, which are all Oath of Fealty, uh, to continue Paxenarian's story. And then the uh, Deeds of Honour, which is uh, short stories that are set in the same world. Then on the next shelf, the pride of my collection is my John Gwynn hardcover selection. Um, I started reading Malice in uh, January 2013, uh, just as it had come out. I actually won that uh, through a, a kind of a name out of a hat competition and never looked back so I've bought all of those as they came out. The follow-up series of Blood and Bone if you've read The Faithful and the Fallen and you haven't read of Blood and Bone what are you waiting for? But yeah these seven books that are set in the Banished Lands are superb. I really really enjoyed them and uh, if you don't already know me and you haven't already heard me do so I will recommend these books almost every chance that I get. Next up, and this is literally the only non-fantasy book that I've got in my collection, um, Pauline is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, a uh, sci-fi book that I read recently and really enjoyed. I've then got another couple of books that, which are split up, so I've got Green Rider book one and book three, which is called The High King's Tomb. 
Christian Britain's series is another one that I really enjoyed but I need to get back into. And then the three books so far by Scott Lynch in the Gentleman Bastard sequence. Really enjoyed The Lies of Locke Lamora. Brilliant first book. Really, really recommend that one. It's got a kind of similar humour to uh, to what I think I have. So I really enjoyed that. The next two books weren't quite as good in my opinion, but still definitely worth a read. So the next shelf down, I've got a couple of book club editions of Terry Brooks' Shinara series. Um, I haven't really read too much in the series. I tried several times to read The Sword of Shannara and gave up, but I just couldn't get past the Lord of the Rings um, kind of similarities there. But I did eventually go back, uh, only December actually of 2020, and I read The Wish Song and a few of the other books there. So at some point I will go back to Shannara and see how far through the series I can get. A couple of uh, advanced review copies that I received many years ago now. So Drakenfeld by Mark Charan Newton. Um, really interesting, actually. I quite enjoyed this one. It's a uh, kind of a closed door murder mystery in a fantasy setting. Um, so it's quite a clever read there. And then I've got the first two books in the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne. The first one, again, The Emperor's Blades, was a review copy. Really enjoyed that series. At some point, I'll pick up a copy of the third book as well, which I've read on the Kindle. Stan Nichols, if you want something a little bit different, this is a book series. Um, the series title is Orcs First Blood. Um, orcs are the main characters. There's a band of orcs um, kind of in within a war band. So there's, I don't know, maybe half a dozen of them. Um, I say orcs, I think it's like five orcs maybe and, and a single dwarf, which is a bit odd, but it's nice to see kind of the opposite viewpoints normally of course we see orcs as uh, they're always the bad guys but uh, this is uh, quite a good opposite viewpoint there a few more melazan books that i need to get to i've only read dead house gates and half of memories of ice but uh, as i said at some point i will get through more of them james barclay is another interesting british author um really enjoyed this series the uh, chronicles of a raven first book is on my other bookshelf that's um Dawn Thief, um, and it's it's quite a good kind of sword and sorcery type. More of my R.A. Salvatore Drizzet collection. The Dark Elf trilogy is, I think, probably the best origin story I've read. Um, it's really good. It's great to see kind of uh, the lore, if you like, behind the Dark Elves and see the city of Menzo Branson. Simon or Green and Blue Moon Rising is uh, one of the books that I attribute my love of fantasy to. Um, I don't think it stands up now, having read so many more books, but uh, I, I still really enjoyed that one. And if you want a bit more of um, of a horror feel with your fantasy, Down Among the Deadmen was actually quite enjoyable. It's set in the same world as Blue Moon Rising, I believe, but uh, it's, it might as well not be. There's you know a couple of references, but you don't need to know anything about the story. Um, but it's, it's quite a good um, atmospheric read. And on my last shelf, you've got my big hardbacks. So uh, a lovely illustrated edition of Lord of the Rings. The last of the Wheel of Time collection, bought as they came out, which is why they're hardback and not matching the paperbacks on the top shelf. Slightly out of order here, but my collection of A Song of Ice and Fire books is probably my biggest annoyance in terms of the books I own because the five books that I do have are all different sizes, designs and so forth. So uh, I'd really rather have one collection matching. David Eddings, The Redemption of Elphilus, a standalone story that I quite enjoyed. Can't remember too much of it though because it was so many years ago that I read it. Then we've got a couple, The Jackal of Nora and the Grand Design by John Marco. Very, I remember these as being very heavily political and uh, kind of military fantasy, but they were quite enjoyable. Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear. And then the last book that's on my collection on this shelf is The City by Stella Gemmel, uh, wife of the late, great David Gemmel. Um, this book was... It's kind of a weird book. It's almost like the city, which doesn't have a name. It's just referred to in the book as the city. But it's kind of like the city is a character within itself. So onto my second bookshelf, and I'll do the same again and just take a still of each of these so you don't have the shaky camera work. So starting off at the top, and although this is my bookshelf, uh, the first 
first books are actually my wife's, I've not read these, but Trudy Canavan's Black Magician Trilogy. A few books by James Clemens, um, the Band and the Banished series, I think this was called, which was quite enjoyable. And then Glenda Lark's Stormlord series, which uh, again, can't remember too much about, but uh, I quite enjoyed this one. Tamuli Trilogy is, uh, is a bind-up by David Eddings. Uh, I didn't really get on with the Belgariad and the Malorian, but uh, the Tamuli I quite enjoyed. Hope and Red by John Scofron, I've not read yet. The Memory of Flames series by Stephen Dias. Uh, this is uh, it's another kind of political uh, intrigue story, but uh, with dragon riders thrown in there. You can see from the size of these it's quite short. I think they're all in the margin of like 350 pages so it's quite a short steer uh, quite a short series fritz liebherr's lankmar this is fafford and the gray mouser so real classic sword and sorcery quite enjoyable but being older it's one of the ones i find um kind of fails to stand up for me i, I kind of prefer a newer more modern writing style so some of the older classics uh, I've, I struggle a little bit more to get into and that was the case here. Then I've got the first two books of uh, the Broken Empire trilogy by Mark Lawrence. Really really did not enjoy Prince of Fawn so even though I, I have a signed copy from Mark of King of Fawns I've not actually read that one and it, I consider myself as a bit of a foster parent for this book and at one point I will find a forever home and give this book to a loving family. On to the second shelf, I've got my Ursula K. Le Guin, although the K is missing from both of these titles. The Earthsea Quartet and The Other Wind, I think, is book six in the Earthsea uh, series. Haven't read any of these, but I do want to, and they're only short books, especially as you can see that uh, quartet there, first four books, and it's basically it's an inch thick so you're talking a couple of hundred pages for each of those four books then some more david eddings uh belgaraf polgara and the reven codex so the reven codex is uh, a companion book to the belgariad and the malorian um, it gives a bit of insight onto the writing process for the books um, but other than that it's kind of looking at the history um, and some of the characters and so forth First four books in the Rift War Cycle by Raymond D. Feist. This is uh, another one of the old classics. That's one of my favourites. Really enjoyed the Rift War series as a whole. Some of the later books, I think it kind of lost its way, but uh, you'll see on the next shelf um, whether I like those or not. Dawn Thief, um, already said, by James Barclay. So out of place because of its size. It's two companions on my other bookshelf. And then we've got my David Gemmell collection. The Drenai, I really, really love. If you've seen my Instagram account, I've recommended these books quite a bit. And I've done so on Discord as well with a few friends. Really, really loved Legend and basically all of the follow-ups involving Drus, involving Waylander and the other characters. These are largely standalone as well. So although some of them do have the same characters in, for the most part, these books are set decades even centuries apart so they're all kind of self-contained showing you the world as it evolves rather than one continuing story over 10 books or so the hardbacks at the end and the last two paper books are a different series they're not draenei they are the regante really enjoyed the first two they're kind of a celtic feel to them so david gemmell is one of john gwynn's uh, influences and and i think this series is most closely resembling the Faithful and the Fallen series uh, with that kind of Celtic feel. I haven't read the next two though, Ravenheart and Stormrider, because there's a bit of a gap in between the two pairs of books. And uh, with the second pairing there, um, it does move more into flintlock fantasy and they've got muskets and so forth, which just, it doesn't interest me. I find it difficult to get into those books. So on the third shelf, got almost all of the Raymond E. Feist books from the world of Midkemia. A um, bit of sun bleach in there, especially on the night, uh, Flight of the Nighthawks, which should be a nice red uh, there rather than that kind of pale, faded pink. Um, I think the only ones in this series, or series of series, that I haven't got is the Empire series. I picked up a second-hand copy of Daughter of the Empire, but I haven't got the others and I haven't read Daughter of the Empire. I just 
for some reason I couldn't get into that one when I tried it, so there we go. And then the last real shelf of books I've got, uh, borrowing my mismatched copy of A Sword of Storms from A Song of Ice and Fire. This is kind of a combination actually, because the hardbacks, most of them belong to my wife, but this is our Terry Pratchett Discworld selection. So we've got a good proportion of the actual Discworld books themselves, a couple of companion books and a nice map book. And uh, also Strata, which is uh, it's not actually part of Discworld, but it's almost a, like a precursor. It's, uh, I, I see it as a bit like a test for Discworld. It's more science fiction, but it is on a flat world as well and uh, was written before. So I very much see it as a test uh, kind of novel for the Discworld series. So as you can perhaps see in the bottom of the shot there, I do have a couple more shelves um, with assorted books on, but these ones I, I don't have on display because my desk is right in front of it, so they're kind of hidden. At some point I need to go through them and find a new home for them. So there we have it, that's my physical book collection. I hope you enjoyed the tour and it wasn't too uh, tedious for you. As I said at the top of the video, if you'd like to hear any more about any of the books that you've seen today, Draw me a note in the comments below or catch me on Discord. What I'll do is I'll link in the description below a couple of the booktube channels who host Discord servers that I'm an active participant in. You can find me on those channels on Discord as Dominish, and uh, the ones that I'm typically active in the most belong to Megan's Reading Revelations and to the Wizardly Duo. So I'll link all of the channels below so you can go and have a look if you don't know these booktubers I recommend that you do have a look at them and subscribe to them they're great people and great friends and then if you do want to you can use their links to join their own discord channels as well if you haven't already done so so I think that's enough talking from me today thank you very much for listening and watching and I hope it's been enjoyable for you for now then take care goodbye